Okay, 6.33, we'll reconvene the Board of Finance budget hearings for the 2015-2016 budget. All members of present, I'll just note for the record that um, member uh, Mikkel is uh, unavailable tonight for uh, family reasons. Uh, she needed to uh, head out of state. Okay, does anyone have a preference for the city budget first? <coughs> the city or the board of ed? Might as well start with the city side. We have 10 percent revenues right now, right? Um, we don't usually discuss revenues tonight. No, that's right. I don't think, I mean, we can if anybody has any Well, because he has to give us, uh, the mayor has to give us some input on it, but yeah, he might have some information to ECS or whatever. So we'll, we'll double back on that. Peter, do you have any preference on the order? No preference. Okay. The, you don't need to discuss revenue tonight, right? I'm not. not necessarily, but if you have questions, we can certainly discuss anything. Um, we do have some preliminary information from CCM regarding the governor's proposed state budget. So, but obviously that's in flux because you right, probably read yeah. the news and see what's happening with that. Right. But the trend has been to hold the city harmless. For many yes, years. overall the trend has been yeah, nothing, net, no dramatic neutral. reduction. Okay, well, I guess we'll start on page nine, general fund expenditures. Okay, I suppose it's up. Page. Page 14 might be more appropriate. And I'll try to move through it um, department. Mr. Mayor, how are you? Uh, move through it department by department, and I think I will just uh, proceed. But if anyone in the department, if anybody has anything they'd like to mention or discuss on each department, we will uh, take it accordingly. Uh, page 14, Department 4111, Board of Aldermen. Uh, effectively, uh, no change. <coughs> Election 4112. Register of voters 4115. for Government Access TV. Four one two one Mayor's Office. Oh, well, let's cut this thing. Here we cut it five hundred bucks. Got five hundred bucks out of gas. <coughs> you call us another five hundred dollars out. Mayor's going to be riding his bike, I hear. 4122, general expenses. Uh, in this area, to the mayor, the, wood, the personal property audit, um, and I realize that's the one they go through and they find uh, the personal property taxes. If we had the cost of twenty-five thousand back in 2013-14, and I don't remember why we jumped it to forty, and now it's this is uh, just a little bit more conservative. This is actually a percentage of there's a, a mirror oh, okay. account on the revenue side, um, mm -hmm. and for every um, personal property, the, this firm I think it's TMK Peter um, Tax Management Associates. TMA, mm -hmm. TMA uh, yes. identifies they get 25% just for that first year. Yeah, right. um, and on the revenue side, the $40,000 represents the, the fee that we pay, that 25% fee that we pay to tax management. Uh, and on the revenue side, you'll see uh, income coming in or uh, revenue being generated from 
the personal property that they have identified. It's an identified item on the general road. Yes. That's a separate item. Okay. Right. So in other words, this, this expenditure would not be made unless and until additional revenue is generated. No, Correct. Cash comes in the door. Cash, cash has to be right. in, in the, the door, door yes. and then they get a 25%. Okay, got you. That's right. The um, line 4773, a uh, both plate open space, that, that's the payment to the water company. And how many payments do we have? Uh, there's, there was 10 overall. It was 30,000 for, the, I think, the first four years. And then it jumped up to this year, which is 31,500. So it did increase this year. It's a, it's a, you're correct, it's a 10-year agreement, ten year. but in year six, they okay. start charging interest. So that's why it went up, probably 30. Okay. And then there's no balloon at the end, right? At the end, it's, it's paid, if I recall correctly. I think that it was just a 10-year ten ten year agreement. agreement. Basically, five years interest free. Five years interest free, the first five years. And then the dollars. At this point, the CCM levy would just stay right there. Uh, oh, that's one way. No, that's not what I'm concerned about it now. Yeah, we met with uh, representative from CCM, or I met with representative from CCM. Our uh, annual dues are going to be above flat mm -hmm. this year, so it will not increase above me on last year's. Okay. Community Development okay. 4123. City Clerk 4129. What's happened in workers' compensation now? I see a lot of the accounts don't have zero. Yes, what we do with that, I mean, that's been historically the same procedure is um, if a workers' compens uh, compensation case is processed, um, there's a portion um, that is taxable and it comes out of regular wages, so we have to transfer money from regular wages to workers' comp to fund the workers' comp. Okay. A, uh, payment to the employee. So this would be only uh, an item would only show here if there was a case again. Yeah. yeah if you see, if you look under the expense column to the left, if you see a dollar amount there, that means that we made a, a mayor's transfer just to move okay. the money down. Is that self-insurance fee? Yes. Um, yes. It is. Yes. The PMA is the the TPA, the third party administrator. Uh, we utilize to administer our, our comp claims, and most of the claims are handled in house by the city attorney's office. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Law Department 4131. Now, the Law Department has its own office, right? The city attorney has its own office in the building? Yes. It, it, the, actually, up until 1982, most city offices were at City Hall. Then the flood happened. And um, the only two offices that are left are, are the mayor's office and the city attorney's <coughs> office. So it's a pretty lonely place, but they operate out of City Hall. Or city Hall. Yeah, okay. Never realized where they are. Because I was saying about the law books that they were on hand there in the office. Ethics Commission 4132. Probate Court 4133. Board of Finance 4141.
of Board of Assessment Appeals 4143, Zoning Board of Appeals 4144. Pension Board 4145, Flood and Erosion Board 4146, Street Commission 4147, Civil Service Commission 4151. John, if, if, on this one here, uh, Tree Commission, I had a figure of 900 going back in there rather than 1,000. I don't know why. No big deal, it's $100. Did we discuss anything coming out? No. Or did they? Uh, the, the gentleman did come from the Tree Commission right. to testify, um, but there was no discussion. There's discussion, about okay. Because there was money coming for the recreation department as well as this? There were some trees that the recreation department um, paid for for the green um, a year ago. Uh, and the tree commission in Milford Trees coordinated with the recreation department to actually plant those trees. Okay. Um, there's a variety of different accounts. We have money for trees. Public Works has an account. UI sponsors uh, some trees. Uh, but again, the $1,000 that's in this line item doesn't get you too many trees. No, not at all. We have 26 square miles in town, and yeah. uh, it wouldn't cover very much forest land. Yeah. OK, thank you. 4151 Civil Service Commission, 4153 Parks, Beach, and Recreation, yeah. and 4155 Economic Development Commission. Conservation Commission 4156, 4159 Veterans Ceremony and Parade Commission, four one six zero Housing Code Board of Appeals, four one six one Houstonic River Estuary Commission. That one there, uh, Brian. That's uh, the one I talked, I was in there with last year with you on this. Is there any money involved in this? Uh, what's the story of this one? The last couple of years, we haven't been asked to make a contribution. Uh -huh. um, but actually, last year, we, we did check to, uh, to see whether or not um, yeah. we were required to, and we were told no. Okay. I'm just curious about that. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Open space, 4162. Okay, that's Steve Johnson, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's him. Okay. I prefer this one to be paid out of the uh, out of the open space funds rather than as a position. That's my position on it. What do you want to pay? They, they have a what's the fund that he's being paid out of right now? It's a, Planning and zoning open space. Open space fund, planning and zoning open space fund. So you want him to be in the planning zone? No, he has, he comes under, uh, it's almost a grant position in essence, yeah. It's categorized as a seasonal temporary position. Yeah. And it is a seasonal temporary position that he has been working in for the past two years mm -hmm. um, from a labor standpoint. Uh, there are problems associated <laughs> with that. Because we have over a million dollars in that account. No, there's uh, how much there's between a, the various you could various accounts, but um, only I think one account um, out of the six or seven that we have can we utilize money for both maintenance as well as acquisition. Uh, the majority of the accounts we have the only, for open space, the only thing that those accounts can be utilized for is purchasing open space property. Um, we do have one. Uh, open space account uh, that takes approval from the Planning and Zoning Board and the Board of Aldermen um, that we are allowed to do both maintenance and um, acquisition for it. And that's the account that we have uh, earmarked funding for for mm -hmm. the last two years to, to fund this position. Right. Okay, thank you. Well, we will about that next week anyway. Right. Okay. I understand the concern, Joe. I mean, they have some position, but 
I don't think we have enough open space to start with. If you look at this thing, you know, the Milford is a mature, largely developed community with a little undeveloped open space. I mean, he does go after grants, I understand that. But we don't have undeveloped open space that require positions such as this. And, uh, We had a position as a grant person going after grants. I, I would go for that better. And uh, but each division has their own people going after grants. Like, you know. I, I would say that um, we do have 3,500 acres of open space mm -hmm. that's owned by the city. Right. There's a lot of a lot of open space um, to make sure that you maintain. Uh, he's also done an open space inventory, which was a huge Herculean project. Um, that you constantly have to update. Uh, in terms of the, the grant component of it, um, in the last year, we have gotten about $30 million in new never-before-seen grants. Probably 20 to 25 million of that has been associated with open space. Mm -hmm. um, there are several of those grants, uh, including the one that he talked about at length, uh, through the NRCS program. Uh, that was a division of the Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, where we were awarded one point, approximately one point seven million dollars worth of monies. Uh, we haven't taken receipt of that yet. We're still early on in the process, but they have allocated one point seven million dollars for us to deed restrict open space parcels in the city. Uh, and those parcels are just swamplands or marshlands. Uh, really, it is all value for us, at least in my estimation. This was a grant that, um, but for Steve Johnson, we would not have identified. Uh, the Steve grant last year, he worked on that exclusively. We got $500,000. And there were several other grants that, have, that touched or concerned open space or um, some component of, of land use that he was involved in the, that process. So in terms of funding that position, um, it's really, in my estimation, it's been uh, a worthwhile person to have. Um, the person, you know, we, we're, we're concentrating our focus on the position here, um, but that particular person that is presently holding that position uh, is very, very dynamic and has been um, well worth, uh, certainly, what he has gotten in wages. In, uh, He's going to get the same wages, so you know, that's my point. And then if he leaves, what happens to his position? It, it gets reviewed by your board and the Board of Aldermen and myself on an annual basis. Mm. So if it's something that is not valuable to the city? Once a position is made, then it's, it's made. But that's my concern, is that if he leaves, we're going to put somebody in that position that probably doesn't have even half probably. The, we'd hope to get somebody in as equivalent. But uh, I'd rather have it as a, I want the man here, I want him to pay, be paid, pay him 60000 but I don't want it as a permanent position that uh, we're not guaranteed we're going to get the same quality of work and now we're stuck with the position. Mm -hmm. um, well, we can always cut the position. Huh? We can always recommend a cut in the position. Well, we never, how many positions have <coughs> I cut in 15 years here? Well, not a few. Very few. We have at least we've cut more than we've added. Um, yeah, but that's to your, 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 your Jimmy's direction on, on reducing certain divisions and yeah. But, but but in this budget, every single actually over the last several years, mm -hmm. um, there has never been a, a net increase in employees. Right. In this budget right here, right. Um, the no the employees that were added to the budget were uh, supplanted from uh, positions that were being recommended to be discontinued. Okay, my, that's all my right, well, we should not go so far. Mr. Chairman, if I could yeah. add a few words uh, sure. regarding this. Uh, I think it's important to note that we, we use the term grant position, but technically it's debatable that it is a grant position because that fund that we have is city money. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, um, and so in essence, this is being paid, uh, um, a person who is, supposed, is a seasonal temp. Um, if Steve Johnson or the position were to continue for long term, it should be a city position, or if it's a grant position, it should be funded by a grant, mm -hmm. which a grant means either from the state, uh, federal government, or from 
a, a foundation or what have you, but I know you look at it as a city grant, but it is city money. It's, 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 I know we're splitting hairs here, but the city it's, money is just coming down. It's just coming from a different fund. instead of the general fund, it's coming from right. Fund 40, but it's still city money. And from a labor standpoint, if the person is working on a continual basis, being managed by the city, and is not going to go away, you know, and stay in our in city funds, then it needs to be, a, you know, a, a perfect position. Um, and that's why I think the mayor's trying to, uh, the city, the administration's trying to put it in a general fund because if the person's going to continue, not on a short term, but long term. But we do have grant positions. We, we, we have, have we have, I think, if mayor can correct me, I think we have two grant positions, for example, in community development. Um, we have two positions there, but those positions are funded from federal funds that are drawn down from from the federal government. And those positions aren't in our budget. And they're not, and those we positions are not budget. in the budget. And they're not, it's not city money. Um, so. But the visiting, there is not the visiting, there is the human resources in that group. HRD. Um, I mean, we, we are funding it. I mean, it, it, it's, we, grant, it's like a grant position, but as, as Lisa Diamond Graham has stated, they follow all right. city orders and their city positions. Right. So. Okay, <clears throat> right. Well, that's by order. That's a department that was created by order that's created. We don't have. From a legal, the, the, the sticky wicket from a legal standpoint is the fact that this position has been um, placed into a seasonal temporary mm -hmm. status. Uh, seasonal temporary is generally for funding lifeguards or camp counselors or uh, things that are indeed either temporary. seasonal or temporary um, for a, a full-time position to um, be carried over year after year. Uh, there are some legal some issues point that you reach may arise. That's the other point. He, isn't, he wasn't necessarily working full-time. He has worked full time, but necessarily he's not required to work full time under the. He's an hourly employee, up to thirty-seven and a half hours a week, which is a full, which is a full time. Yeah. He gets no hourly. Hourly. So He is an hourly employee, so he will get paid if he's not working. He'll just he won't get paid. Or would that be true in this position? As a salary. It's it, would be a, it would be a salary position that would be paid hourly, but but he's you know he is working a, right for all, for all intents and purposes on a full time basis, okay. and that's the dilemma we have. You know the, the HRD they're working full time, they're being paid out of regular wages, not seasonal temp. And they follow all of our our pension, our benefits structure. I mean they pay into it, but. They're following it. It's just historically by ordinance, we don't have them in the general fund. Mm -hmm. We don't have any other positions that are in fund 40 or 70. So we should, like, they, like Steve. They did an ordinance on this. The ordinance is okay, we're making this a grant position. They could do it, right? That's a, like, I would have to get. Like you said, it's by ordinance at the HIV are. But we are. I mean, it's, it's part of, I mean, this is uncharted waters, I think. I mean, right. Say that we, don't have this, we don't have this in here. I don't like uncharted waters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a sailor. <laughs> what, what department is he actually under, or would he be under? It would be a, a standalone department. Um, would be. Okay. Right now, he works in an office space uh, mm -hmm. next to the engineering department on the first floor of Parsons. I know I have and brought up, I was, my only concern with it is, is that it's going to grow as a department that you're going to, he's going to need support of some sort, whether that's secretarial or whatever it may be. And, you know, it's, at some point I can't foresee us uh, bringing in a, a clerk or another administrative assistant. I mean, there's the possibility for efficiencies, whether we would um, have him become part of land use uh, or recreation or another existing department. I, as it's working right now, though, it seems to be pretty effective. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he, he does uh, utilize, you know, the, the assistance of other departments, um, like all departments do. There's a lot of interconnection and a lot of uh, intra-departmental uh, communication and, mm -hmm. and assistance. 
thank you. Is there going to be a job description for this? There is. There is. Yeah. I can get you a job description. What I think may help too to kind of more clearly define uh, what he has done in the past is. Uh, well, we received that no, information we, last year. We received, we received I can give you an update yeah. of just this year, the, right. the list of the grants and the list of activities that we've been involved with with open space, just because uh, there was a presentation I made um, to the open space committee back in December, if you'd like to no, get I'll, I'll just that. hang with this for, for now. Okay. Okay, go for it. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Public Library 4193. Coming from the field, I empathize. Permanent. This is, this is permanent, and this is a position we supported last year that I, I think didn't, didn't get through, right? So my feelings about the position are the same. I think it's with all the regulatory requirements and all the work that is uh, necessary to be done by the finance department, I think, I think it's money well spent. The only question I have on this is if it's not a CPA appointee, would the, way the salary stay at the same figure? Yes. Um, because our, our city accountant currently is not a CPA okay. per se, but she has, she, in lieu of that, there was the wealth of experience um, in municipal government finance. So there's experience in lieu of CPA, but CPA is always definitely welcome and sometimes preferred. How long has our city accountant been here with us? She's four years? She's been here since the end of 2011, so it's about four years. Sport. And what did she start at? She started um, definitely at a lower step. This is that she she's now reached the maximum step. But she started, I believe it may have been step three um, when she came on board in, at the end of 2011. So that would have been about what, what she started, you know? Um, it probably was in the 80,000 range. Wow. Yeah. But she's been with the department how long? Um, she's been with the department since, I believe it was November of 2011. Oh, she came from outside? She came from an, uh, the town of Stratford, and she also worked for the town of Fairfield. Okay. Okay, 4215 MIS. <clears throat> Under the computer hardware, where do I have 6343 she Yes, we have a technical correction to make. Uh, 6343 is, um, is needed for, a com uh, to, yeah, for computer hardware. Okay. Um, it needs to be reinstated. That's the 25532? Yes. Line 4977. Yeah. 012 computer hardware. Um, 6,343 dollars. That's the payroll system, right? The yes, the, the, payroll machine, the machine that seals, seals all of the payroll, payroll check, all the payroll checks, W-2s, right. 1099s. Thank you, Mr. Inspector, for reminding us. Uh, we have that. I think uh, everyone can okay with that. Yeah, I Technical correction, primarily. Human Resources 4219. There were some technical corrections uh, here as well. There are suggestions for you folks to consider. Oh, yeah. Peter, do you have um, I do. a readout or some sheets? Or you um, I, will, I will have a readout next week, but just to give you a quick summary. Um, we will be, um, as Mrs. Barnes stated in her testimony, um, because the current pension administrator has moved on to another department, uh, she is able to go forward with her proposal to um, hire a full-time benefit specialist, if you will, who would um, 
assist with the pension administration as well as benefits administration in general. And I believe that the person would come in at the minimum step so that if you add those two numbers together, that's the maximum step of 26x. But Mrs. Barnes intends to bring in a new birth benefit specialist at the minimum step of 26n, so I will change that in the new, in the revised page. And I believe she also wishes to, with that savings, to give a slight um, pay increase to the HRA, Human Resources Generalist. Which is a new position this year. Yeah. It's basically a, an upgrade of the existing position. So there will be an overall net savings for the wage, wage accounts for the positions. Basically, in essence, budget neutral. Um, but the, so the increase or to the... So the savings is going to go to the other person. The save, the, most of the savings will go to um, change the position from HR administrative assistant to HR generalist. That's a slight increase uh, for that change. I know I had said here no change in salary, but that was due to the first proposal. But with the change in uh, staffing that just occurred recently, um, she's able to go forward with her initial plan. And that, that, that so are we adding the position or not? Uh, no. no. Uh, if in essence, it's a change in existing position. Okay, so we're still going to have three? We're still going to have um, three, yes. I will change the four to a three, yes. Okay. So no new positions, but a change in classification for both positions. So there will not be a pension administrator, is that what we're saying? That's going to move to another department? There still will be, but instead of calling the person of just a pension administrator, there's this new all comprehensive term of benefit specialist to handle retiree benefits. Um, eventually, we hope to assist with active employee benefits and also okay. um, the, the existing pension administration. So the line item would be benefit specialist with maybe three, three employees. Correct. Uh, I have that for them. Right, thank you. Anything further? Okay, Police Department 4310. Um, the only technical adjustment or correction that I think we talked about the last time, um, and we're waiting on additional information from either the HR department or city attorney's office is one position. Uh, there was an agreement with the unions that when the position was initially initially filled that it would be removed from uh, the collective bargaining process and become a uh, non-rep position uh, based on a recent retirement. Okay. Just so you're not, uh, just so you're aware, the two positions um, are steno dispatcher and stenographer on page 50. Mm -hmm. um, they're the ones that do presently do not have the non-rep description, but as the mayor stated, per an existing agreement um, in the police contract, and due to the uh, a recent retirement, um, we should be able to convert those to non-rep. The steno and the steno dispatcher? Yes, steno dispatcher and stenographer. Are they both retired or just one? Uh, one retired, but I believe that triggered the the clause that said, okay, now that that was the last person, mm -hmm. grandfathered, if you will, um, now they could go forward with executing the conversion of those two positions to now. Okay. And when would all this, this uh, Dispatcher determination is going to be made between the police and the fire. And it's going to keep on going for a year or so, or what? It's probably um, another year's worth of uh, discussions. And uh, I, would, I would say probably by the, the budget next season, you'll, you'll see that change. Okay. Would that have any effect? It would, wouldn't it? It would have less employees, right? Or not? Long term, there may be a um, cost savings. It's one of the, the reasons why they're doing it. Right. Um, again, because if you have um, two, 
different uh, different unions within one within one room, um, and their union contract says that you have to have at, at least a person and a backup person at any given time. Um, in this situation, you could, instead of having four people in one room, you could potentially have three. But again, there's lots lots of additional discussions that need to happen before anything's finalized. But all the equipment's all set. <coughs> yep, the consolidation happened about two years ago. <coughs> and so physically everybody's in the same room. Uh, there was a lot of cost savings associated with that. Uh, there were uh, public safety enhancements because of that. Uh, I mean, the fact that we have a three, three and a half billion dollar communication system uh, and we only have to maintain one instead of two, it's a, a big savings. Uh, but there are other savings as well, uh, and incentives that we got from the, the state from consolidating the deal. <coughs> One other question. He was saying that uh, his overtime is greater than the amount that we're budgeting. Now, where does he get the funds to pay that additional overtime money? Well, the police dispatchers are out of the, the police budget, and the fire dispatchers are out of the fire. No, department. I'm sorry. No, I've had. That, that, that's, the way, that's the way I under his overtime account for regular wages. Oh. He said that 490 is not what he's going to be paying out. He's going to be paying out more than that. Um, well, in any given year, uh, there are there's a period of time where there are unfilled positions because there's retirements and there's a ramp up time between when a officer retires and when a new one can come on mine. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a period of time where there's additional wages. Uh, from those unfilled positions that are available that can be redeployed if necessary to overtime positions. Um, this year we, we mentioned at the last meeting that we did have nine retirees, which was a lot in the police department. Um, usually there aren't that many in a given year, but um, again, if there's a, a period of time, several months where you have nine employees that aren't, um, that whose positions are not filled, you'll, you'll have some additional money in, under the regular wages, 4111000. Um, that can be transferred to overtime. Does he come in and ask for those transfers? I don't remember the police doing that. If it's a, a transfer with his per last week, huh? Yep. I think he just did it last week. Do you remember? Or the memo transfer file. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. And, and that transfer actually uh, was was really for the severances uh, mm -hmm. because of the large number of retirements. The right. severance account was was low, uh, so we actually took some money from uh, the funding that the, the Board of Ed actually um, oh, provides yeah, every year for the, for the SROs. Mm -hmm. um, so some of that money, in addition to some of the um, personal services funding, was utilized to offset the, um, the, the deficit in that, in that severance account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it came from regular wages, right? Some of it came from regular wages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Good, good. Sorry about that. If memory is getting short. Do you do? They need a transfer approval from regular wages to overtime. No, is the, is the mayor correctly stated? If it's within the same category, like it's personal done. services, it's a mayor's transfer. Right. So to answer Mr. Fitzpatrick's question for you, Mr. Chairman, the yes, he does. The police department does spend more than what is budgeted for overtime, and normally. It comes from regular wages or other personal services accounts that where there's a, a slight surplus, and that helps to fund the deficit in overtime. Thank you for your opinion. Yeah, we were talking about the farms. <laughs> Do they have a special account, uh, like people donating? Like just recently, somebody's uh, father died. I don't know which in Hamden or somewhere, and they funded the whole police store. Do we have anything like that that people? Uh, donate, but where does that go? Just in the general fund? Uh, the, the police department does have a, an account that they can take donations and utilize for either specific purposes. A lot of times, when someone will either bequeath money or right. donate money, um, they will have something tied to it. Um, sometimes, uh, or in the past, there's examples of um, a donation of money for um, bulletproof vests. Oh, yeah. Remember, right. there's a recent donation of a bulletproof vest for a canine. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are specific uh, donations that people have uh, to fund certain things. I know that every year there's donations for the D.A.R.E. program. Right. 
uh, to enhance that program. Uh, but probably, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago, the Board of Aldermen did adopt a special reserve fund for the police department so that they could take in private donations uh, and, and, and utilize that funds to, to do those earmarks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Fire Department, Just that special equipment services, I forgot why that uh, they went up, but I think we got money from somewhere else, did we not? That's uh, 4749. Trying to and last year, $2,000 increase over last year? Went from 72000 no. to 74000 No, it was 60 to 74. Uh, 4749 under operational. The right. Special the, equipment servicing. Project, that's projected. Huh? The sixty thousand is only an estimate of what we might spend for this fiscal year. The sixty. It's actually seventy-two. All oh, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's where yeah. I go. Yeah, you're right. We budgeted. Uh, yeah, we budgeted seventy-two. That's right. <laughs> funding for this, for example, the health department uh, gets cots out of this, this account, or um, the police department use, utilizes some of the funding for their, their PSAP center, but the fire department doesn't oversee the, these accounts. Okay. Animal control, 
and some additional resources, but um, it's operating very well with the, the three animal control officers and the, uh, the court cat. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we're going to eliminate that position? Yeah. Um, yes, unless I hear otherwise. Okay. Is that to be done by ordinance or by uh, Board of Alderman? No, it's, it's, it's not a position that's filled. It's, filled it's, it's not, not a position filled. that's funded. It's not, it's it's not, not funded or filled. Oh, so it's it's funded. Funded. It appears in your budget. Yeah. In your budget it's just because technical. Because it's just it's technical. technical. From yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. From last, it's a carryover from last from year. Last year, it's like a record from last year. Right, sure. But I don't think since it's two years in the running, that we can safely remove the line in technical matter next year, for next year's budget. 4360 lightings, hydrants, and water. Peter, um, I know that the fire chief did report, at least with respect to the, uh, the hydrants. Will you follow up uh, before the, the final vote on these four, four items? <coughs> One last time to make sure that we have budgeted appropriately. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Public Works, 4420. <laughs> Highway Parks, 4421. <coughs> Building Maintenance, 4423. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I apologize. I'm just to go back to highway and parks, yes. um, I will be making a couple of technical corrections to, I believe, two union positions, of course, that were recently reclassified. Um, and I, I've already made the changes, so I'll print those out and highlight them for you next week. Thank you. I think we did discuss that. Uh, Mr. Saley may have mentioned, I think uh, mentioned something about that. Yes. Okay. Four, four, four. Sorry, just so they may have reclassified as a higher wage. Yeah, you know, I believe one went up and one went down, um, a grade. So basically, one was like an upgrade, so to speak, and one was, you know, for lack of a better term, a downgrade, and then a change in the job title. Slight like positions empty, obviously, if they're going up and down. Uh, maybe up okay, but down just be an empty position. It, it may have been. Um, and it, it's not a new position. I think it just was changed to another description that already existed, um, okay. as you as you will see. So I think, that, yeah, nothing, really, or what? Not, um, the net effect um, might be minimal. <coughs> I think it was a slight decrease to the budget okay. overall. A slight oh, good. Decrease. <clears throat> Building maintenance four four two three. Does building maintenance cover schools? Yeah. No. No. They have their own building maintenance. They paid part of this building too? Yes. I want to get money out of you. That's what I thought. Okay. You can tell what part because the uh, the walls are different colors. The city side is blue and then the board of ed side is a pink. Yeah. So that's the part that they pay for. Get out. <laughs> Oh, pink. No, no. That's true. Oh, pink. Okay. You're stuck with it. <laughs> and, if, if, and if you use the lavatories in the pink hallways, they have the fancy toilet paper. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm not going 
I think for the leave it alone. Four four two three. That's Billy Maynard still. Four four two four. Engineering. Engineering. All position filled. Uh, uh, there's just over here. There is one position that um, is not filled. One of the, the tech positions. The a person just recently retired, and they are negotiating with the union at this point to have uh, one of the engineering tech positions job description updated to make it, you know, consistent with uh, positions in 2015 as opposed to 1970. And as soon as the negotiations with the union is completed, they will. Advertise that position. So it'll be upgraded money to? Uh, no. No? Okay. I'm just going to double back for a second to uh, building maintenance. So Mr. Mayor, they had requested $50,000 for roof repair. We, this is page 70, mm -hmm. line 4923. Yep. Was that for a particular uh, building? Um, I didn't call. I don't recall, um, but the, fa the fact that uh, it was reduced from 50000 to 5000 means that during the discussions that I had <coughs> back in December, right. um, I believe it was the health department roof, okay. which back last fall were between um, when this budget was generated by the department, which would have been October, November, in December, we funded uh, a roof project at the health department. Uh, that was about the $40, dollars $45,000. Okay. So that's my guess is that um, that was removed because we funded that <coughs> health department group project through LOSIP money, which is a state grant. All right. All right, good. Thank you. Any further on engineering? 4424, not General Barrage, 4429. This, this particular line item actually, the, the two line items, 4335 and 4336 yes. are perennially underfunded. Right. Um, you know, towards mid year, uh, there's already a request for, mm -hmm. uh, for budget transfers. <coughs> Whether they're administrative transfers or legislative transfers, those accounts run thin midway through the year and it becomes an issue. Uh, there have been times where um, it has not been cost effective because vehicles that are critical to picking up garbage um, and other city services go offline. Uh, it's more on the, the labor side often when that happens. It's not a very efficient use of the existing resources that we have. Uh, so the additional money that we have uh, proposed for uh, that particular line item um, we have found savings in other departmental items <laughs> within public works, including uh, sanitation. Uh, there's been some significant reductions in terms of the tipping fees and a couple of the other accounts. Cool. What goes into the equipment supplies? That parts? Parts for all the trucks, and parts. it's it's you know all city vehicles except for fire. Uh, fire has their own maintenance department, um, but the garbage trucks, the police cars, the, uh, the, the backhoes, the, the front loaders, the, um, all, all of the, uh, the yard equipment from skag mowers to uh, weed whackers are repaired at, the, at that facility. Does that include stuff you send out too? Yes. Okay. Or, or it comes out of the general garage budget. Do you know why the seasonal temporary was added? I missed that in this discussion with him. We didn't have it before, now we do. Hmm. I never noticed that. What, solid waste? 
Not on the road. On the garage for some <coughs> season temporary we didn't have before. Peter may have it in his notes from our December meeting. Uh, if he doesn't, we'll uh, circle back with Public Works and uh, get you some more information for your next meeting where you vote on the budget. Okay, thank you. The fire department, they, uh, most of their maintenance is done outside, though, isn't it? Outside services or not? The big stuff? Yeah. Um, Any of it, really. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, they have theirs, yeah. They do a lot in-house. Mm -hmm. They have a superintendent of apparatus uh, and a, a garage crew that, that does repair the... Where's their garage? Yeah. Sorry? Where's their garage? Station 7? Where's that? Lewis Farm Road? Lewis Farm Road. All up in the woods. Oh. Well, I'm trying to the highway. Yeah, I know where it is. You know where it is. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I yes, the I explanation for the seasonal temp line item is to help in getting trucks on the road during peak times. So I guess there are these peak times where they need to bring in seasonal temporary. So. No, I don't buy it. That's, that's, no. that's a, a summary. Yeah, I think we need to take that out. Yeah, that's a summary. We have to make a decision if we want to take something up now, don't we? Well, we don't have to, but it's uh, logistically, uh, we're not technically voting, but if there's a consensus by the board, you can give the Peters the guidance uh, to give us an alternative to consider next week. Any consensus on that? Where, uh, where did that, does it come out of overtime if it didn't, you know, higher seasonal or okay. temporary, is it? The seasonal temper, they want to hire extra people to prep trucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's happened in the past. That they're prepping the same yeah, trucks. Where does that come Never had an expenditure in that area, I don't believe. Yeah, I'm, I, I really <coughs> couldn't say. I mean, Mr. Saley would remind no more. I can get some additional explanation, mm -hmm. but if you want to consider it for the next meeting, mm -hmm. um, I will have, have some more information for you okay. for them. That would be helpful. Yeah. Nothing further on uh, General Garage Solid Waste 4431. And do you know what the uh, miscellaneous professional fees are? For which? For General Garage or for Solid Waste? Solid Waste. Um, it's probably things like Plus O'Neill does engineering for the uh, the transfer station, which on a yearly basis we have to submit to DEEP um, in order to get the, the permit for the transfer station. Uh, that's part of it. Also, uh, there's other reports, stormwater reports that we have to submit to DEEP on a, on a regular basis. Um, well, that went up to 25. This, this line item, there was a portion of it, if you remember, there's a portion of this line item in the sewer department, um, which then got transferred over maybe a year ago. Which one is this? I'm sorry. Peter, do you recall the amounts? Oh, yeah, I don't recall the exact amounts, but, but yes. But it was for some engineering service uh, associated with stormwater right. that it was contained at one point, um, or a portion of this $12,500 was contained in the, the sewer department budget, um, which is now had been moved over or transferred over to solid waste. But I'll get additional information on that as well. <clears throat> Thank you. You know, before we go further, now I just noticed it would better come up with seasonal and temporary again. Building maintenance, we have 8,000. have spent nothing by, for the past year. Uh, <coughs> General garage is the six thousand. Now we're coming up to solid waste. Okay, you didn't agree to it, but we're also not. I'm not so.
the city waste removal costs, will that ever go down in any way, shape, or form? It's going down this year. If you look at the projections yeah. from last year to this year, there's a significant savings. Mm -hmm. We were able to negotiate uh, a much more favorable rate. We did, yeah. Um, our consortium of, of towns that we associate with for um, trash to energy, for solid waste. Uh, it's almost the identical <coughs> consortium of towns for our recycling, but um, we got together and we were at about $65 a ton for our tipping fee, and that got walked back to about $60 a ton. Mm -hmm. Now, more goes into account than just the, the straight tipping fee. Uh, the running of the transfer station, uh, the transfer oh, costs, and, and a whole host of other things. It's not just the tipping fee. If I recall correctly, I mean, that, that line out used to be significantly higher if you go back in the budget five years ago, four or five years ago. I believe it's gone down. It's gone down. So we years. had it down, That's and then we, it went down a little bit below reality, and it, it's gone up to a more appropriate level, I think. The last couple of years, but nice to have it lower, but more in tune with what the actual costs are. We can go back a few years, it was actually, I think, close to <coughs> Okay. Public debt service 4503. Now, this account uh, <coughs> from 2013 to well, roughly to 2015, it's over a million dollars increase. What would it, we, we've had this refunding and everything else, but is it we did more bonding or what's it has? Huh? Yeah, we had to do more bonding. Yeah, there had to be. We went up uh, a million. The uh, debt went up, what, 20? Mm. It has to do to some degree when um, bonds become due. Again, this is a, a compilation of generally the last 30 years worth of, of debt. Mm -hmm. So this includes maturities, Peter? Excuse me? This includes maturities? No, it includes, it's, it's pretty basic. It includes the principal and right. interest payments right. on every bond. Yes. Okay, but not not any maturity, like if there's no balloons or... No, there's no, oh, there are no balloons. Right. It's a 20-year amortization. Okay, mm -hmm. 20 years, so it does include the principal. Yes, so. it includes the principal as well as the interest for um, public improvements and sewer. Okay, and, so, then you, and then the clean water. So the debt went from where to where? If I look at the 8 million eight and I look at the 9 million eight, the underlying debt level went from I, I, I see what you're saying. What happened in uh, 2014 was that um, we had we had a we had some surplus, um, and that's and that's due to the longstanding um, need to estimate what the November bonding will be, um, and we don't know that when we do this budget because you know, when we, we we issue bonds in November. Right. And this budget is approved in May. Right. So in November, until I, until I do the sizing <laughs> for the debt, based on actual data, mm -hmm. on how the, the projects are going and, and how fast things move, um, I don't have an exact number to the dollar. To, to I, So I have to come up with a projection of what the um, interest will be cost will be on those bonds that we issue in November. Another component of why 2013-14 was relatively low mm. is that that particular year we had just uh, refunded two and a half million dollars and they break it out over seven years with the largest payment in the first year. Um, Peter, is that fair to say that that particular year there was a, a larger savings then the, the next, I think, two years that they broke it down because um, the way that they distributed that that two and a half million dollars in savings was that that first year um, it was front loaded. It was front loaded, mm -hmm. and not as much the next two years, which includes this year. And I think that is one of the Does that help explain or do you like? No, I just want to know what the debt level is going from where to where. In other words, 
That should be. I should yeah, I, I could. Can, I can. If you want me to get it. I yeah, can, if you want. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, it should be easy, easy to get. That's easy. Yeah, it's probably the annual report. Okay, while he's grabbing that, we'll continue. We can go back. Health Department 4610. And Mr. Mayor, in this particular department, we have a significant increase in seasonal temporary there as well. So. Seasonal temporary? Well, that, that was because, if you recall, um, there was a reduction of a couple positions or a a repurposing of several positions um, with the retirement of uh, Dr. McBride. Um, we needed a, or we need uh, a medical position mm -hmm. to act as our, our school and community health advisor mm -hmm. that's required by statute. Um, we are now following the example of most municipalities in Connecticut by having two separate people as opposed to a director who has an MD and acts in that stead. Uh, because of that, the, the reduction in the salary for the director position was reduced right. from 138 to 115. Right. Um, also, under the, uh, under the uh, positions, uh, there was the elimination of the deputy director. Mm -hmm. And what we did in order to account for the the services that the deputy director provided was we returned the nurse administrator from a 10-month position, which it was this last year, to the what it was three or four years ago, a 12-month position. So that went from a 10-month position to a 12-month position. And we added additional monies, um, about $15,000 to miscellaneous professional fees. Mm -hmm. Uh, to hire a um, on-call person to administer some of the community uh, health work that was performed previously by the deputy position. Uh, we also increased the, the miscellaneous professional fees in order to account for uh, the new community and school health advisor. So overall, there's a pretty significant savings in that department. Um, as you can see, under the, uh, the wages section, the, uh, the positions went from $824,058 to uh, $724,089, approximately $100,000 in savings. Now, that was offset by approximately Twenty-five, um, twenty thousand. I'm sorry. Twenty thousand. About thirty, thirty-five thousand. So it's about an overall savings of about seventy-five thousand dollars. Maybe a little more. Sixty-five, sixty-five thousand dollars. Right. I have a position. It's something about a nineteen-hour seasonal temporary. What was the nineteen-hour? What was that? Uh, I what that was. She explained it. Nineteen-hour. Oh shit. See, that was the position actually. Um, that would be hired to do the community, uh, the community health position. Mm -hmm. um, with the elimination of the deputy, the deputy director. director, there would be a community health uh, seasonal temporary position, uh, as well as the increasing the, the nursing administrator from a 10 to a 12 month position. Okay, that's very. Would that always be in there? That temporary position. That's what I. That's I think based on the, No, that's I think based on that explanation. Yes, that was what I was getting at. So the open space director could be seasonal temporary. No, that's not. <laughs> Why not? Well, this is only a three-month position. Technically seasonal. This would be a seasonal position, like our lifeguards or like Slash our... Slash temporary. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but it is... It is going to be a position. It is going to be a, an expense that the department has on an on ongoing basis based upon yes. the restructure of the department. But yet, the overall savings under the personal <coughs> services wages is yes, about sixty-five thousand. I understand, it's a, it's a, but that's one of the one of the offsetting costs. You, you saved a hundred thousand, but 
in order to save 100,000, you had to spend another 35,000. And you also eliminated the benefits of the position too, because mm -hmm. none of the positions here would have associated payouts. All right, that's helpful. I uh, just needed recollection. Thank you. Any further? Oh, Peter. Oh, yes. yes. Just Thank to you. clarify. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, I unfortunately I don't have my calculator with me, but the debt service itself, uh, it's a combination of this department, 4503, and then the school, school debt. debt, which is in a separate box uh, further down in the budget. But if you add everything together, that's the total debt service. Um, and for last year, uh, the, the current year that we're in now, um, the total would be 13 million 064. Um, and for 2016, the new year budget, um, just a slight increase to 13 million 106. Um, and the mayor is correct. I mean, it's, there's a lot of different factors, but the there was a jump from, um, in last year's budget of close to a million dollars, and we disclosed that when the when the budget was was proposed. proposed. But what's the total debt? Just the debt. Oh, the total debt, yes, the debt. I have that, yes, I yeah. have that. The, the total year. debt um, last year was at one hundred and the principal one hundred and twenty seven point six million. And this year uh, one hundred and thirty two point five million. That's total long term debt. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Page 82, Recreation Department, 4620. So that went up uh, $8,000 in seasonal temporary because of the wage increases on the lifeguards? They are just all that. Um, if you see from last year, there's there's no recommended increase for seasonal temporary. Right. Uh, they do have about 200 seasonal temporary employees oh, that yeah. will be making more. Uh, again, the uh, the minimum wage is increasing up to ten dollars and ten cents, whereas it was eight dollars and seventy five cents a year ago. And because that. I think 95% of our seasonal temp seasonal temporary employees are at the minimum wage, so that it will have a real effect on this budget. What is the minimum, minimum wage coming to effect? They're increasing it um, each year over the course of a three-year period. All right. Capping out at $10.10 an hour. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Employee benefits, 4710. <coughs> A refund. <clears throat> How long is the hot and hypertension? That that's eventually phasing out, is it not? Um, the only the only people that are eligible for this particular fund are police officers and firefighters right. that worked prior to night, October first of nineteen ninety six. Um, no one else is is eligible. However, uh, there's actually a couple of adjustments that are bills right now um, before the legislature um, that may revise that. Uh, but as of right now, you had to have been on the job before 1996 in order to qualify for this. But this, this applies to you know, existing employees mm -hmm. um, that fit that category as well as retirees. Um, 
the amount that's budgeted here from the discussion with our risk manager and our actuaries, this number is, um, we're, we're hopeful that this number will be enough to satisfy the potential claims for this coming year. All right, okay. Given what we're, what we're up against. So, roughly around 2017, uh, we have a lot of people go off a 20 year basis. Once they retire, are they eligible under this program still? Yes. If they can only have certain illnesses, right, to qualify. You know, any type of hypertension, right. tension, right. 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 And again, this is just a component of workers' comp. Uh, you could bring a claim uh, for your, you know, for a, um, a high, high blood pressure or, you know, a heart condition <coughs> associated with an injury that you sustained while in the course and scope of your employment. Um, what this legislation does is that it doesn't make you prove it. Uh, it's a rebuttable presumption that says if you were a firefighter uh, or you were a police officer and you worked during this period of time um, and you and you at some point develop high blood pressure, um, then you automatically have a claim. Uh, it's a rebuttable presumption so that as long as you fit into these categories, you're automatically uh, presumed to have it a compensable case, whereas under the workers' comp system, uh, the burden is on the employee uh, to demonstrate that they have a compensable case, meaning that they had to uh, show that they were injured during the course and scope of, of their employment, and they have to meet that threshold burden, whereas the, the burden switches uh, under heart and hypertension, and essentially the, the employer has to, to prove that um, the heart condition or the high blood pressure uh, was not the result of their employment. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good, thank you. Benefit and salary reserve, 4749, up to 4790. Unallocated contingency, 4799. Council on Aging 4801, Fine Arts Council 4803. Uh, final question, when you, when you meet with these agencies, do they give you a breakdown of their budget? They do. I think most of them gave your board a breakdown okay. as well. Not on this one. Not on this one? Yeah. Okay. I, don't know I, can get, I can get the breakdown. Okay. Would you like, would you like that for this agency? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there were a couple of them I wish we had a breakdown. Yeah, no, uh, a couple of them was one, and what was the other one? Bridges. Huh? Bridges. Bridges, good. Bridges, yeah, they used to give us a... Uh, That's a big Did they not give us one this year? Not this year. What you call it, left? There's another one. one. CMED, 4807, Regional Mental Health, 4811, Borough of Woodlock. What is the city supply in the Borough of Woodland? Anything? You give them a grant every year? Yeah. They have... Uh, what services do we give any? Garbage. Garbage, garbage pickup, schools, oh. sewers, uh, those are on the city side. Uh, they pay for, um, through their grant, um, they pay for street paving, street lights, uh, storm drains, and uh, catch basins. Uh, they actually do some beach work even though the beach in front of um, Truby Do Little Park, Cauley Beach, is um, a beach that the city is, maintains as well. Um, they have a separate tax for borough residents, and they do the extras with that tax. They, they pay for the, the borough library. They pay for uh, the borough hall. They pay for some additional police services. 
uh, during the summer months for the borough. And there's a few other things that are strictly uh, borough related that come out of the borough tax for those 1,700 residents. That's one we didn't get a breakdown either. No, no, we didn't. They do their own snow plowing too, right? They do their own snow plowing. Basically, uh, they have a mini public works department um, that does snow plowing, paving, um, and some other work. They don't do sewers, they don't do garbage. They yeah, have six miles of road. That's okay. what he said. I That's what he said. said. Okay. Huh? No, I think they, I think they have more. It seems miles bigger than six miles, but. Oh, that's, he, the, that's the number he said. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they don't even have those. They don't even have I might cut this down to two hundred. I'd like to stir the pot, don't you? Yep. No, I don't think we've cut out. Why not? Well, he asked for two. We have to cut everything else. You know. Originally, he was at two forty-three. The mayor put him down to 220, I think, right? Yeah. He said he was originally at 243. Of course he will. Anytime you go into Santa Claus. He came out of your meeting at 220, right? Well, every year there's negotiation, and several, <laughs> several, <laughs> year, several years ago, the Board of Aldermen actually made a significant cut. And, um, the borough had threatened litigation, and there was a compromise or a resolution that, that particular year. Uh, this goes all the way back to the 1970s. Uh, Jerry Weiner, I think, was still the, the borough attorney, and uh, I forget who the uh, I forget who the uh, Austin, borough board was. Austin. It may have been Dick Austin, but it probably was Dick Austin because I think he was he served there for 30, yeah, long 38 time. years. <laughs> long time. But uh, the 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 borough actually filed a, a suit against the city of Milford, and a judge. Um, ruled on an injunction, and at that point there was a compromise uh, back in the 1970s. Uh, what I think the, the charters of the, of the borough say, and the charter is a, a state act, a, a state statute, is that the, the, the Burgesses and the city have to come together and agree on a number uh, for, their, for their annual um, grant. And again, that could be interpreted in a variety of ways, but um, it has come to a head at least two times that I'm aware of over the past 40, 40 50 years. Joe, you got I think we have an agreement on two twenties. Yes, right. <laughs> you got to become a bird. Yeah, you have to say, you move, move to that one, or move to a good month. It wouldn't pay me. If there's nothing further, we'll move on to transit 4812, bridges 4813, veterans grade 4815. Yeah, bridges, we'd like another breakdown. Flotilla 4816. Excuse me, just a yes, second. Sir. On bridges, they uh, indicate 1,298 people from Milford, 593 from West Haven, uh, uh, you know, they deal with. And see, that's what I want to know. How much is West Haven pumping uh, in there, too, when other communities into bridges? They we're not given an any figure on that at all. Well, I think in the past, I don't know how much West Haven had, but I know their, their total budget is around $5 million. It's more than that, no. It's is it more than that? It's multi million dollars. Yeah. I think it's... Um, 13 million dollars. 13 million, wow, yeah. okay. So we're less than a half a percent of their budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or less no. than, no, less than we're less five than percent. Less than, or less than or five percent. Less than five percent of the budget. Yeah. They, they wrote a letter that you know, said that basically they were scrounging for every penny to keep certain services right. going with what the state is you know, with the, the government That's every doing. Year. Same, every same story. That, that's the first paragraph. Right. Okay. But I mean, I think they provide a valuable service. I, I, no, they I am do. a cynic. They do, but I don't know if our grant is that is that crucial that it would stay at three fifty. From what I heard from the, it's such a small part of the entire budget. The the chatter that's coming out of um, Hartford and the proposal from the um, from the governor's budget is that there are certain 
blocks. Uh, the hospital association is very unhappy. Uh, the mental health industry is unhappy um, with the, the amount of proposed funding that is going through the legislature at this point. Um, so they are likely going to take a hit um, from their state funding, which out of the $13 million that they have, if we're less than 5%, they're probably, and I'll get you that number, um, the lion's share of, of that $13 million. It's, you know, a small percentage comes from, you know, they do bill patient insurance companies, mm -hmm. but um, the majority comes from the state, and a less, lesser portion comes from the municipalities, Orange, West Haven, Milford, and the other communities that they serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a big cut of mental health. I saw that in the play, but that I can't believe that's going to go through. I really can't see that. Uh, addiction services, and I mean, this guy was—he's going to whack off. He hasn't got an addiction in his household somewhere. <laughs> All right. All right. Looking for Tuma. Four eight one six four eight one seven. Human Services. Four eight one eight Health. Uh, excuse me. Historic District, <coughs> 4819 Open Progress, 4820 HD2, Historic District 2. Four what eight, classifies a historic district? George Washington slept in or what? Well, there's a whole process you have to go through. <laughs> to get right so, although he did sleep in town, but that building's long gone. Boy, he was really slow in that 4821 Health Services, 4822 Cemetery Services. So on, on the health services, the VNA, that's another savings that the health department uh, did identify for this year. Okay. Um, again, it's another reduction um, that the new health director has uh, suggested or recommended that we can reduce by another $20,000. So. Okay. Wow. Good job. 4823 Patriotic Organization Association. For Are we getting rid of that? Several years ago it got consolidated into the right. BCPC, the Better Ceremony and Parades Commission. Right. Um, so we don't need this department, right? We don't need this department. It could be eliminated from the next budget. budget. Yeah. Thank you. Beth Al, 4825, Boys and Girls Club 4826, and private textbook, private school textbook 4992. Four nine nine three education audit fees. Excuse me, just yes, a second. That one I Boys and Girls Club, I think I'd like a breakdown too. Okay. If we have a I think they it's actually start. I think they may have that, but I'll, I'll yeah. yeah, I didn't read my stuff. I, I don't remember getting it. I think they, is that it? Yeah. They did, okay. I actually have, I have two copies, so I may have stolen You took mine. <laughs> you want a minute, Joe, to take a look at that? Huh? You want a minute to do Here's the next copy. Like? Yeah, thanks. I know I have that. Telling us she made 3,000 of food and that, but I don't know if that was So I'm assuming the grants government is uh, 70,000 of ours in there, right? She has uh, 126,000. Right. I don't see a 70,000 separate item, so. It's, it's, it's in there, yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's in that 126. Yeah. So he's getting um, 56,000 from somewhere else. <coughs> I think actually, in this pamphlet, she breaks it down in pictorial form, too. Um, it shows the. Uh, I think she also gave us a, um, a pie chart as well. 
that shows the distribution of, of different uh, revenue streams. Yeah, yeah. Is any other town involved with us on this at all? No. This is strictly Milford Boys and Girls. At one, at one point, Milford Boys and Girls Club was uh, associated with um, the Valley mm -hmm. Boys and Girls Club, but since uh, I think two years ago or three years ago, um, there was a formal separation and we're a standalone club. Uh, when the Boys and Girls Club was initially opened, they, they helped get the club going, mm -hmm. um, but now it's Strip. its own Milford Boys and Girls Club. Okay. Well, here's here's the uh, <clears throat> this is a this this shows how much money in a in pictorial form we generate in income and mm -hmm. the expenses as well. So yeah, I do have that. I do really have this. So they charge membership dues and uh, three percent. Thanks, I appreciate it. Okay, I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Uh, four nine nine three education audit fees. Four nine nine four school debt. Four nine nine five education benefits non teacher. Four nine nine six is education operations. We will return to that in a moment. Four nine nine seven education health insurance contribution. Do you, who manages that? Is that you, Peter? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is there a third party administrator? Correct? Yes, the Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield is the They administer and they tell you how much you have to have in there. The, they do, but our healthcare consultant, uh, Ann Hewitt, actually vets those numbers and they come up with, um, for lack of a better word, a, a more sharper projection for the city. And I use their numbers uh, to help us come up with the budget. Okay, they come up with the number that Anthem actually reviews the claims and... The, the data, uh, and, yes, and, is coming from you. Okay, yes. and then adjust the doctors or whoever, and then they submit the bill to you guys to fund it. Yes, Something exactly. Like yeah, we are self-funded. Right. Yes, exactly. Right. And we and we on a daily basis they submit the TPA submits those claims to finance, and they, we fund them on a daily basis. Okay. Who was it that did the review of the eligibility? Uh, Sterling benefits. Who did, did that? The, uh, Sterling benefits uh, provided the dependent mm -hmm. eligibility <clears throat> audit that we just did. Yeah, they saved uh, over 200 people. Is that the? Yes, for the first time, it's remarkable. I was very pleased to see the number of uh, subscribers or members come down. It's really pretty much remained relatively flat. I mean, there's been some slight ups, up increases and decreases, but overall, pretty flat. And this is really in a, in a long time that I've seen, you know, since this is the first time this has been done. I believe so in recent memory. Oh, I don't I recall. That. Uh, okay. being done How do they get paid, Peter Sterling? Uh, they get a, 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 it's a preset fee. They and then if, if they didn't achieve the savings that we agreed upon, then they would get a lower fee. Okay. But they, I believe they did achieve it, so they'll get the UK okay. yeah. Good. Good. Education, Health Services, School Nurses, 4998. Okay. Are they under the domain of the Health Department or not? The Education? They're under the Health Department, yes. Huh? They, they work in the schools, but they're under the direction of the, the, the health the health department. Okay. That's right. Special funds, sewer fund revenues and expenditures. That's 4154. Peter, this has to be totally funded by sewer fees, right? Yes. It has to be totally funded by this box of revenues that we see. Yes. Expenditure is on pages. Uh, okay. Available fund balance. I don't have my notes on that. Mm -hmm. 
What is that? That is similar to the appropriation <laughs> fund balance that we do in the general fund, where each year we look at the, the, the history of the fund balance, where we're at, and we determine how much of that can we use to support the budget to help kind of mitigate the, the tax or increase, or in this case, the sewer use fee. Do we have a figure what's in that balance, that fund balance? Um, yes, I, I can get that number. You, do you have any rough idea what it is? I mean, don't hold me to this. Yeah, I mean, right. I have so many numbers in my head. Right. I, I, it's definitely in the millions, uh, maybe. Right. I'm thinking two million, maybe, I, more or less. Because we only used 250 in 2013, now we're going to double it. And yeah, we, we've gone, you know, we haven't gone dramatically up or down. I think, you know, two, we've been at 250 for a while, and then I think about a year or so ago, I felt comfortable increasing it to 500 because the, we had such a healthy surplus. Why not go 750? If that's possible. But that reduces the sewer tax more, right? Yeah, in theory, yes. Yeah. Our sewer user fee is huh? one of the lowest in the state. It's yeah. under $300. Like a <laughs> the residential is under $300. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, well, keep in mind, uh, just about $300. Keep in mind, through you, Mr. Chairman, that you know, in, in recent years, we've had emergency appropriations done for the sewer department. We've had to make um, extra appropriations through the Board of Aldermen <laughs> for several major capital oh, projects. Right. So yeah. I look at it as also good to have because if you, you know with sewer treatment plants, things can, if things go wrong, good you point. need to fix it right good away. Point. Yeah, so. I'm not going to fix your sewer this year. I can't. I don't have one. <laughs> you want me to? <laughs> Never mind. Sewer Commission 4154, uh, wastewater 4426. Six. That's the expenditure side of the revenue fund. Or the and and, and Mr. Mr. Chairman, just if you'll notice, there is a re one reduction um, on page one, 100. We left a small amount in. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, there's a reduction in an actual position in the associated benefits. Yes. That was as a result of the Consolidation with engineering, correct? Yes. Okay. Four four two six wastewater. He's been with the city of Milford for 28 years, so it is going to be a, uh, a difficult position to fill just because of the years of experience that Jim Cooper has um, had and the, the knowledge and the institutional uh, awareness that he brought over 28 years. So it's, um, it's a position that's going to be difficult to fill, but we will fill it. Uh, Mayor Blake, we had a, you had mentioned that we might there was talk of the mechanic sewer line to working meter. Is that still? I'll, I will circle back with Chris Saley and Jim Cooper before Friday okay. and um, touch base with them about okay, that. That's what I'm yes, the, the mechanic sewer line, there was the, the discussion about changing that to a working meter. <coughs> that would oh, yeah. be about a $2,000 increase. Um, but I'll have more information on that, the, the most up to date information by your next meeting. Thank you. Now the replacement for Jim would be um, probably about the same salary, is it? Um, See him likely, yeah, huh? but um, yeah. we have not filled that position yet. Right. I believe that the applications are due by Friday. So he felt as though there was somebody in the department himself that would be qualified. He was very we very well, that. We very may well uh, hire from within. Yeah, he, he was very happy. Within. He did feel uncomfortable leaving, he said. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. He was a good man. He knew his stuff. There's a lot of puns that you can say, too. Right? You got it. <laughs> I couldn't say that word. Enterprise. We're on camera. Enterprise 
identify fund revenues, expenditures, Harbor uh, Management Commission. The revenues are 4157, the summary of expenditures. You're going to have to so, wait. Just a second, on that. Seven. Uh, now, Harbor Management, is there any talk of getting pilot back on that? No. You know, Martin Looney is the new Senate President for town, and his big thing uh, is pilot funds. Um, his focus is hospitals and state-owned land, but um, it's been my request from our state delegation that if there's going to be a, a new bill that takes a new, fresh look at <coughs> pilot funding mm -hmm. uh, to try to get our, our boat pilot back because Milford benefited from that greatly. We had sure um, so many registered vessels in town just because we have a, a, a harbor and um, a lot of recreational watercrafts registered in Milford, and so it disproportionately affected us. Uh, so it would be great if we can get it back. This is a year where um, they're struggling with the state budget, so who knows what's going to happen. For, for municipalities, at least as of this point, um, it's looked okay. Uh, they haven't reduced the, or at least the governor's budget has not reduced municipalities um, from the previous year. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't really um, suggested an increase, but uh, this whole funding has stayed flat or we can hold harmless. So we'll mm -hmm. see what happens by the end of the legislative session. But um, does the session end before uh, our final budget figures from the Board of Alderman? The session will end before the Board of Alderman adopts the budget. However, whether or not the, the budget is, um, the state budget is adopted. But right. um, the last, I think, four years, they have adopted the state budget. Um, without having to have a special session. This year, uh, it may be more difficult. They may have to go in for extra innings. Uh, mm -hmm. That's at least what the, the chatter is, that they're not going to be able to get through all, everything that needs to be gotten through by the, the end of the legislative session. Okay. But who knows? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Anything for the Harvard Commission? Uh, <laughs> of course, 4121. Ah, uh, yeah. What's the fee we pay those people to run it? Harvard Commission? No, the golf course. Um, Somebody runs that for us. There is a percentage that we get in return from the rounds. Okay. Uh, there's also, based on the number of rounds, we get a donation towards our open space fund. Okay, so 82 is what we... What we get about thirty, about $30,000 towards the open space fund. And then um, into the capital funds, Peter, do we... You know, we get yes, about $80,000? You're correct. It's roughly in the 30000 range every year we get. Um, it goes into the golf course space open, uh, golf course open space account fund 76, and then the golf course itself through the cart fees and then the you know the basic fees that are collected gets. You know we've been putting set the budget's been 72 for all these years, but Mr. Dick Austin, you know he was right. We've been collecting more, and it's not like they've lost the money. It's gone into fund balance. They've been generating a surplus. So he felt. It would be more transparent, if you will, um, to, to increase the budget to show the actual revenue uh, that's currently being collected. Our, our, our percentage. Um, and that's the 82, yeah. Right, that's we get the 82. We get the 82, another 30 something thousand goes into the open space. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that 82 that we, we take in, there are certain expenses that we are still responsible for, that the, the golf course. Administrators are responsible for the daily maintenance, but we're responsible for any capital maintenance. We're responsible for the, the water usage. We're responsible for um, several other things that appear on the, the expenditure side of the budget. Okay. And what he did, to be fair to Mr. Austin, is he did not increase the expense budget. He left it flat, and even though we raised the revenue 
but I have to balance the budget, so I, I put it under depreciation. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt comfortable with that because they're building that new um, outhouse or maintenance building, so that will increase the depreciation, and the city account will calculate that. Okay. That came out of the, uh, the open space from the, uh, the uh, shed? Um, it actually came from an allocation transfer from these for lack of a word, the fund balance in the golf so, so, fund, in this fund. Yeah. So I don't, it really, the bulk of it did not come from the open space. No. Where did it come from? From the golf course, Fund 18. Oh, they, oh, they have the fund, they have their own fund balance. Right. And we transferred that. Um, <laughs> what do they use the open space fund then for? Um, that's for purchase of open space, maintenance of open space. It's not necessary, it's, not restricted. It's required to have both the Golf Course Commission and the Board of Aldermen approve that. Uh, the resolution or the ordinance uh, that controls that fund uh, does not specify that the open space that from that fund has to be purchased uh, for a golf course. It could be any open space within the city. Um, but because it is money that is generated by golf course fees, there's at least a thought that some of it should be um, associated with the golf course use, but there's no requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ten thousand of general fund. All right, I'm done. Uh, speaking of revenue, we'll go to page four. Uh, we have some questions on general fund revenue on page four. <coughs> Some type of grant for the for the increase of twenty three seven sixty eight. You know, where is that grant coming from? It is Title One grant. Uh, the, the Title One grant is listed in your budget. Uh, it's it's um, under G one page G one all the grants and, and these are entitlement grants that come from the federal government and the state government. And because part of the responsibility of the director, the new responsibilities of the director, will be to manage the Title I grant, we're allowed to use a portion of that salary from the, or a portion of the grant to pay for a portion of her salary, proportionate to the amount of time that she'll be spending on the grant. Which page was that? Both pages. G1. It's in a separate section. Yeah. Grants, grants detail, and it's G1. It comes just before the appendix. Oh, before the appendix. Yeah. <clears throat> G1. Yeah. And then on pages G2 uh, and G3 is the um, explanation and descriptions of each of the grants. So because this person is going to manage that grant, it covers part of her salary, Correct. and that covers the increase. Correct. The, so the point city two, side, huh? The point two, yeah, um, of her salary, yeah. She's she's a full time, um, one point oh. So point two will come from the Title One grant. Okay. So the general fund, that is your general fund. Correct. Okay. So the education budget is a wash. Yes. Now saving, there's no savings, right? Well, net savings of fifteen hundred dollars. Well, okay, yeah, fine. It's a wash. It's a wash for yeah. all practical purposes. Yes. Yes. And on the and we're picking up twenty three seven sixty eight. Correct. Okay. 
Can you tell me what the projected enrollment is for 15, 16? I noticed that the enrollment's been going down about 200 students per year, 13 yeah. to 14 to 15. And is that trend going to continue? It does. Um, the, um, let's answer your question first about the projected enrollment, which is in here. Um, it's in the executive summary. Uh, Roman numeral number 14. So the projected enrollment for next year is uh, 6,222. Uh, what Roman numeral is that? Uh, 14. 14. So 6,222. And do you have one for the year after? We do. It's not in here. Okay. We, we can get it for you. We, we, we do two. Um, normally, we do um, one projected enrollment per year. It's done by um, a company called NESDEC, New England School Development Council. Um, we can send you those. Uh, and then that those numbers have been confirmed by Mylone and McBroom, the consulting firm that the board has retained to do the long-range planning and the redistricting plan. So we, we can get you the, uh, the enrollment figures from NESDAQ and from my own room. So next year's projection is about the same as this year. Almost, so it just goes down 20. Correct. went through, uh, I guess, a long process about closing a school. Yes. Are they going to revisit that? No plan. As, as, far as, as far as I know, they have no plans of revisiting. Um, they, they spent a little more than two years on the long-range planning process, and then that um, culminated in their decision in October to, um, to move forward with the K through five, going back to the K five uh, configuration, right? Um, decentralizing the preschool, you know, right. you know, um, three or more schools, um, and redistricting uh, across the board, and keeping all all fourteen schools open. Did they they had consultants, right? They did. And the consultants recommended they recommend any closures. Uh, they made they made many. Um, they, they provided the facts, and then the Long Range Planning Committee made recommendations to the board, and then the board spent all of last summer going through the recommendations of the, taking the information from the consultants, um, looking at the recommendations from the Long Range Planning Committee, and then they ultimately came up with their final decision. Okay, so did the consultants come up with the closure of the school? That was one of the options that they presented. They presented. There, there were there were many. Um, it was, as I said, it was an, um, the long range planning committee uh, process was about eighteen months, and um, during that time there were many, many, many scenarios that were put out by the consultant. Um, there, there was wide ranging from closing both high schools and building a new one, um, making one high school, the high school, and making the other high school the middle school. Um, there were scenarios where um, the, you would close two elementary schools. There was a scenario where you close one middle school. There was a scenario where um, you have, within the two high schools, you have two specialty schools within the two high schools. And there was another one where um, the uh, harbor side would be closed as a middle school and would be a K-8 school, K-8 specialty school. So when I, when I tell you there were many scenarios that were thrown out, um, it's volumes and volumes of information that they went through. All of it is online if you care to look at it. It's, it's all there. Every, every, every presentation that was made by the consultant, all of the um, 
decisions or the recommendations that were made by the Long Range Planning Committee and all of the workshop materials that the board used over this past <coughs> summer, that's all there. And the Long Range Planning Committee is made up of members of the Board of Ed. How many? Actually, only two. There were only two members of the Board of Ed that were actually on the Long Range Planning Committee. It was, off the top of my head, I'm going to say it was, um, uh, I think there were 14 parents. I think there were one, for, one from every school. Uh, there were two or three. There, there were four principals, one from each of the, the grade configuration levels. Uh, there were teachers. Again, I believe there were four teachers, one from each of the configurations. Um, and then the, the ex officio, uh, two members of the Board of Ed, two members of the Board of Aldermen, and then the ex, ex officio or support staff were the superintendent, Mr. Cummings, and myself, and, and Mrs. Kelleher. So how many people were on this? Many. Many? Like 25? About, yeah. I, about that, that's right. And they, they met, they, they met um, you know, many months. Mm -hmm. A lot of time and effort, um, you know. And so when they made final recommendations, were they voted on by this body? Yes. In other words, what, what finally came to the Board of Ed was mm -hmm. something that was agreed upon by the majority and Correct. and that was implemented by the Board of Ed. No, the Board of Ed the Board of Ed took what the Long Range Planning Committee Long Range Planning Committees what they sent to the board was recommendations. Mm -hmm. And there were uh, the Long Range Planning Committee sent a number of scenarios in those recommendations. It wasn't all just one recommendation and this is what we think you should do. There were a number of scenarios, and then the Board of Ed took those, and from those, um, all last summer again, um, decided on what they decided on. And that's, in this, that's what's in the budget? Correct. Right. This budget reflects what the Board voted on in October. And about. Correct. And that is what, um, that's that's the that's the way that the school system. I mean, they they made a commitment to the parents that um, that that this will be the configuration moving forward because people have asked for a return to stability. It's, it's been a number of years where there's you know kids are moving from school to school because of, for different reasons, um, and um, and one of the main reasons that parents wanted to get away from the K two and three five was because of the, the number of transitions that students had to make from one level to another, um, the inconvenience uh, to the parents, the lack of cohesiveness, uh, when you, you could have a parent with students in four different levels of schools. So how do they split their times for PTAs and things like that? So that was, that was one of the, the main things that parents wanted was to go back to the K-5. Um, and, um, and, and the board, I think, is has made a commitment that uh, that's going to be the scenario for a long time. And the redistricting will, um, is a necessary piece for uh, ensuring that, that over a period of time there's enough space in each of these schools and there's a leveling of the amount of students. Um, there's, the population has, I don't want to say it's shifted, but where the population is now compared to where it was 10 years ago, um, the, the majority of population is on the west side of town. And so you have some schools with 450 students, sometimes more, and on the east side of town you have schools that are just barely 250. There's a wide variation in the, the number of, uh, in, in the enrollment, and you can see it in the enrollment figures. Um, so the redistricting will level that to a certain extent. But that's what, based upon the decisions that the board made, that's what we built our budget on. Thank you, Mr. Richell. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Jim, the salary of the director of the academy, it seems extremely high in comparison to the other principals. This is really a principal position, is it not? 
Well, yes, yes, except it's you know, the academy is such a specialized program. Right. But, um, but it really isn't. Um, if you look at the, the appendix, I think it's to be funded at the level of an elementary school principal. Yeah, but the elementary school principal has a, three times as many students. If you look at um, A13. A13? Correct. There is a, um, yeah. there's, there is a, um, a step class and a step for administrator of the alt ed. And it's, the top step is 118,000. Right, where an elementary principal is at 137,000. Right. A high school principal is, as you can see, is um, much higher than that, 145,000. So the, the all-fed administrator is considerably lower than the other principals are. But you've got to look at the number of students each one of these people are handling, this person's handling. True. Projected even 60 or something. Uh, I'm not sure you can do a one to one. Huh? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> a principal of high school has got more responsibility than a principal of 80 kids. Quite a bit. I think this is a high, high salary for what the uh, position is calling for. Uh, I, I respect your opinion. It, it's, yeah. it's, um, it's in the um, administrator's contract. It's spelled out right. what, the, what, the, what the position will be. That's why. Before it was half teacher salary, half administrator salary. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, I think Dr. Fieser explained why uh, the board feels that it's in it's in the best interest to move the position up, as well as the <coughs> responsibility, as well as the added responsibilities that the position doesn't have now, um, like the uh, the homebound program that's there in the afternoon, mm -hmm. um, as well as the additional responsibilities for the Title I grant. How many employees are in the academy? Do you know? I don't yep. know what that is. Yep, yep. There's, uh, I believe, that's in here. Oh, the academy, yeah. 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 Obviously, with the one administrator, uh, there are uh, 6.5 regular teaching positions, 1.75 special education teaching positions, and then the, um, right now, the point eight guidance counselor. I'm proposing that that go up to a full nine guidance people. counselor. Nine people. Approximately. Was a principal in high school, though? Yes. And We're talking about $118,000 for I, nine I, people. I understand. <laughs> Um, but the principal of the high school also has two assistant principals mm -hmm. and a dean of students, as well as a, a, a you know, cadre of other support staff. Right. Staff. I, I, I'm just not comfortable with that. But the Board of Education has to approve that type of income. And I think they could have looked at that a little bit better. Okay. Uh, what are we doing now? Tomorrow? I don't know if we were going to talk about the resource officers. Yeah, I think we're just having a general discussion on the on the board of ed, trying to see what the sense of the board is. The resource officers, <coughs> we want to make a comment on that. Well, we were just, when we reviewed, uh, I know that the they weren't included in the police budget. Right. So we're only getting funding for half, correct, from the board of ed. That. Correct. That's my understanding of the seventy-five thousand for the additional SROs. So if you were going to fifty-fifty split, so if it's not, if it's only fifty and the other fifty is not in the city side of the budget, it doesn't seem to make much sense to fund two two positions that aren't that don't exist. It would have to be a um, policy decision from you to uh, increase the the police department budget by two additional positions, which I don't. I think it's going to happen. So, in those circumstances, although we think you all recognize the value of the SROs, um, we do have four officers at this point, 
and the Board of Education budget does include the middle school greeter and the security coordinator. So I, I would certainly consider the removal of the additional SROs. Could you get that piece the board summary that you can take a look at? The, um, and the way the, uh, the summary that I'm looking at that was presented by the Board of Education does break down the, the major budget requests uh, in comparison to the major budget savings reductions and the net between the two, or the difference between the two, is really just a net increase of about 400,000. Uh, the pro programmatic changes requests were just over 2.3. The corresponding reductions were approximately 1.970. And my understanding was that there was approximately $400,000 in one-time costs associated with the the, well, reconfiguration may be the wrong word, but the return to well, elementary reconfiguration back to the K through five, which presumably are one-time costs. Um, so that's the primary difference between the two. Obviously, there's increases, salary increases, and contractual increases on the on the side. But I think the bottom line is that the major budget requests are offset by significantly offset by major budget savings with the difference primarily being the one-time cost related to the reconfiguration. I, I'm fairly comfortable with it, um, other than the fact that, other than the SROs, which, again, are, are, does not make any sense to, to fund the positions that don't exist. question I have is, uh, the, the uh, enrollment figures that uh, Jim supplied us with is a drop of 400 students between 2012-13 to 2014-15. And the drop in the staffing is minimal, 12, uh, 22 people. And that's, that bothers me, that we don't have a greater reduction in staffing when we have 400 less students in the system. When you have an average class, well, if you want to run it down to, say, 15 to a class, you know, you could have a reduction in teaching staff, I think. We, we have had a significant, huh? we, we well, have had a significant reduction in, in teaching staff. 22 of total, total staff positions. 960 projecting to 20, well, to, uh, to our 15, 16 budget. Right. It's 22 people. That's not significant compared to uh, well, most of it's in non-certified staff. Well, 10 is there. 10 is there. Yeah. Administrators didn't drop at all. That stayed right up in the top. We took 12 out of these teaching staff. And with the administrators, you still have 14 school buildings that are open. That we have staffed what? by administrators. 14 school buildings that are open. Right. Um, but administrators includes people in the uh, in the building here too, is it not? It, it is. Right. right. So my feeling is that, that that's the staffing that could be looked at a little bit more closely, considering the drop of 400 students. And that's only to the 2014-15, with 15 to 16 projected enrollment. Do we have that somewhere, do we? Yes. That's now, 15-16, right, that's, that's, uh, that's 62-22. Right. It's 22 to plus again. So that's 422 ch uh, kids. That could be another teacher, 22. If, if you look at the, 
you look at the staffing at each of the schools, I mean, it's, it's all broken down for you on page um, four, Roman numeral 14, the enrollment and staffing per school. Um, we, the teachers are placed where the students are. Right. By the number of students that there are. Right. Um, you, you can't go lower than the number of teachers uh, given the, um, the um, uh, yeah, what am I thinking of here? The um, number of students per class. The, right. The, um, Even if it's 15, I mean, if we go lower than 15 for a teacher, except for a special ed or something of that nature. But we're not. It's, it's special ed, you draw five. <laughs> For K, for K two, it's twenty students, and for uh, three five, it's twenty four students. That's the that's the maximum. The average is what? 20, 20 students maximum for K two. Right. Twenty four students for three five. high school. Yeah. Okay, that's just my point of view on that. I think the the salaries in that area could be looked at a little bit more closely. Okay, going back to what Brian said, uh, on the first page, the major budget requests the additions um, for the 75 for the four uh, for the SROs for the two SROs. We agreed to take those out. Uh, what do you mind? Uh, yeah. Well, I just want to get yeah. Yeah, that's that's because I want to come up with the new members here. Yeah, that's my. I would certainly support that. Because, uh, okay, so that's 75. And that brings us down about two million two fifty in additional. Uh, let's see the reclass of the academy. I guess that uh, we have to look at the increase because we're getting that from a, a, another revenue source, but it's still an increase in the budget, right? No, it's only in, it's it's an actual savings in the budget of fifteen hundred dollars. The okay, general fund 15, budget. Okay, fifteen hundred bucks. Right. It's 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 a wash for yeah. the general budget. The, the the difference in her salary is being picked up by the title one grant, in effect. Okay, but it still has to be part of your budget as an expense. Not the general budget. Not 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 what you will put in that operational figure. No, it comes out of the title one grant, which is separate from the okay. budget. Okay, so then there. There is no 22 increase. No, that this and, and I apologize there is no 30 for the, savings. No, and I apologize for, right. the, for the confusion. Here. Right, those two numbers don't eat, should be Correct. taken out. So that's another 22. So now we're down to 22, 30, and on the other side, we're taking a 30 out. So we're down to 19.42. So 2.30 and. 60, about 290,000. I followed the first half. I'm not yeah. sure if I followed the second half. Yeah. It's, you lost me also. I mean, the first part I saw the uh, 22 and the 75. Right. But, but if you there, take out the 22. the second part, that there's no savings. That 30 in savings doesn't exist. Reclass of teacher FTE at the academy. That thirty doesn't exist. That savings. If, if I could, if I could say, you should disregard both of those numbers. Right. That's what I'm doing. But you can't reduce the number by that amount. It's it's a our budget is a savings of fifteen hundred dollars. Period. That's oh, it, okay. I'll give this, you the fifteen. This, okay, I'll give you the fifteen hundred. So nineteen seventy two five sixty six goes to nine. It's still, it's, it's still, the 30 is still in that number, though. But if you add the 30, if you take you, you the... You can take the 30 out. These, right. these numbers are That's for illustrative saying, purposes. Right. It, right. It's, they're not tied to, um, the, the bottom line numbers are not tied to... Um, right, it's, 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 a, it's an example. Exactly. It's, it's major, it's major savings and major reductions. Right. There are other major increases in Oh, the I realize that. I realize that. But Brian's point was that just in here, what we're looking at is an increase of, what was it, 400,000, okay? And I'm saying it's more like 300,000. Okay. That's I, I, I follow you there. Yeah. Okay. And that, you know, we pretty much agreed on the 300,000 that's in here. Okay. 
So the difference, the net increase difference, putting aside the, would be approximately 1.8 as opposed to 1.9. Something. Uh, this you look is on page two. Area, so if you look on page two, yeah. toward the bottom, the difference with the 75 and the 22 is 1.97. If, if you back those out, it's, a, it's an even 1.8, which I know Jim, it's not necessarily one for one, but for. No, but you're taking that. I, I, I understand. You're taking it out. I, I understand. But not so much with the SROs, but with the. I have about a $300,000 difference. Which is, which is more than accounted for by the one time costs. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm looking at the total difference between the budget. I'm not looking at the difference between the request. There's a $300,000, under your analysis, there's a $300,000 difference between the request and the savings as opposed right. to a $400,000. Right. right. But I'm taking that difference between the $300,000 and the $400,000, which is $100,000, and, and backing it out of the bottom line difference between the 2015 budget and the 2016 budget. 14, 15, All right, so you're, you're backing it out of the 1897. Correct. Right. You're bringing it out of the 1.8. All right, so that brings us, well, that's roughly 1.9. You're taking 300 to 300. Well, it's not 300, though. It's only, it's only 100. The difference between the, the recap, major request versus major savings, yeah. There's a four hundred thousand dollar difference between major request and major savings. Yeah, I got that at three hundred. Right. And now it's at three hundred. Right. But that's so that's the major that's the there's a quote increase in major requests of three hundred thousand. Right. There's a three hundred thousand. Right. Basically, yeah. Three hundred thousand. Right. Yeah. Right. So of which four hundred thousand of those can be allocated to the one time costs associated with the elementary school reconfiguration. Okay. So if you, my thought is you would reduce the major budget request by the hundred thousand. So that's basically a one. So it would, it would the difference would not be four hundred thousand; it would be three hundred thousand. In the in the difference between major request and major savings. Right, three hundred. Yeah. So if you reduced it by that one hundred thousand, you would reduce the net difference in the budget by a hundred thousand. Right. You go from one eight nine one nine to one eight. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we got to the same point. We just yeah. went quite a different road. Yeah. But I'm just I'm I'm not fully on board yet. I understand the seventy five thousand. But what else are you reducing to make that hundred thousand? Your the SRO or your no, twenty two thousand, which which we understand what you're saying, but it's I'm taking the twenty two out and the thirty. I'm taking the effect of, of on both sides out of there. But if you take the, the effect of both sides out it's of there, neutral. So you're right. yeah. out of both sides. It's only still only a net if you took which I'm telling you I mean, the thirty the and the twenty two bucks were, were incorrect. Pardon? The twenty and the, the twenty-two and the thirty were incorrect numbers. Right. right. The real difference is fifteen hundred dollars savings. I, I know that, but you know, okay. we're we're at I don't know. I guess we're at ten thousand feet, and we're not worrying about I you know fifteen hundred bucks. But it's still it doesn't. I understand what you're saying, but from ten thousand feet, it's still a seventy-five thousand. You're removing for the SROs. Right. I, I fully understand that. Right. I don't understand what else you're taking out. Nothing in particular. I just, I just think it's. I would be comfortable with that reduction, given all the factors. Basically. What do you tell them for? Brian and I. I, I, yeah, I don't agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, on the other. Relocation or the reconfiguration. Yep. Are these guesstimates? 
they're, they're based upon our experience from five years ago. That's, we, we based upon, we based these figures on what our experience was five years ago, and in most cases went more conservatively this time around. But MIS, for example, yeah, how can you? you, you think, MIS five years ago, what it is today. You know, <coughs> uh, I, I just don't understand how you're getting at these figures. We, we, uh, we, spent, we spent much more on the reconfiguration five years ago than we expect that we're going to spend this year. What was it cost of the reconfiguration in those days? Do you remember? Offhand, and just, if you don't know, that's all right. No, off the top of my head, I don't. I don't, I don't have it. Um, the the, um, the moving costs alone, we, we know, were three hundred, a little over three hundred thousand um, dollars. The overtime costs were over a hundred thousand um, dollars. You know, we, we, at that time, did you reduce teachers? We're adding yes. now teachers. Did they reduce teachers? Yes. That's yes. That was the the, the reason that the reason. In 2010, that the board decided to go the way that it did was because there was a significant uh, cut in the budget by the board of aldermen. If I remember correctly, it was approximately a 1.8 million dollar cut in the budget, which um, which prompted the reconfiguration. Because when you go to a K-235, you have the economy of scale. Um, which was they were able to reduce teachers and they closed Simon Lake School. Those, the combination of those, amounted to the difference in the 1.8 million dollar cut and from what they requested. I, I, don't, I know that's an explanation, but I, I, having been there, I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that because that, that just as the board went through a two-year process with this long-range planning. I think a similar process was ongoing back in 2010 with the reconfiguration to the K357. That just didn't come out of a 30-day meeting after the Board of it, Board of Alderman Corporation. It was it was one of the things, and again, I was not I was not on this side of the street. I know you're right there. But I, you um, may know more than me, but, but I, that was always my impression. Well, the, Mr. Cummings was the, the um, administrator. Right, he was the uh, interim superintendent at the time, and I know that he was looking at looking at the possibility of how you could reconfigure to save money. So I know that it wasn't it wasn't in a thirty day, right. but it wouldn't. I, I think I would venture to say they would not have closed Simon Lake School, and they probably would not have gone to the K two three five configuration if there weren't the financial need to do so. Well, I think we've discussed, certainly we can have further discussion if anyone would like. Most certainly. Um, I, we appreciate your input, it's very helpful. Thank you for your patience tonight. I'll um, get you those in moment for you. Okay, thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting. I should have flipped on his head, but it just wasn't. Uh... <coughs> well, we'll just spend a minute if anyone likes on, on revenue, and we can just. Uh, that's fairly. Uh... Well, that's the problem. I think. Uh... Some of the revenue figures will continue to um, revise right. as we have more information. Uh, make those technical corrections as, as the state numbers come out and as the, the consultants have more information to give to us. We ever sell any real estate this year? Then you can just close. Um, the board has the board has uh, voted to sell off station six. The Melba Street Firehouse. Okay. It, there has not been a closing yet. Okay. There's still negotiation that's happening. Um, 
that will have that will happen before the end of the fiscal year, or that should happen before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. What are wagering? Any, any, uh, has that been fairly stable, the OTB? It's been fairly stable. And we get again the percentage of the bets that are placed at winners, which is uh, over on the, the corner of the Boston Post Road and Okay, Lane, not the Lane, Lane, Rose's Mill, Mill. Okay. Rose's Mill, Rose's Mill, Rose's Mill. Wood, Road. Woodmont Road, Woodmont Road, Woodmont Road. Right. Oh yes. That's a Woodmont's right at okay. Okay. Shell and Gas yeah, Station. Sure. Rose's Mill, no, right. Rose's Mill, I believe. Why do you know so that area so Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I oh, live. Boy, I I live the the <laughs> I'm closer to Woodman, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Um, conveyance taxes, you don't know more about that either. Yeah, where is it? I was just looking for that. That's yeah, on page six. That's a, I think that's the chairman's belly wick. Chairman oh, is, uh, Real so, estate closings and all the money that he brings well, into I would, love, I, was, I would love to think it's going to be six hundred thousand. Um, I suppose it's been fairly. We've been lucky. We've had a, a few large commercial transactions. The Smithcraft um, sale uh, over to a Arizona hedge fund a year ago um, was a real windfall for the yeah. for that particular account. So that was. Um, you know, the thing with Milford, we always have three or four hundred transactions every year anyway, so it's fairly steady. You know, and the prices were stabilized. So it's, it's probably a good number. I want an elderly tax freeze. We get any this year? I'm old. Uh, we are. We actually increased it uh, two years ago. So we, we increased the, uh, the circuit breaker threshold program. Um, mm -hmm. So there is income. Uh, requirements that are associated with that, but we, we doubled the income requirements of double the, the number of people not qualified. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, just wait for a cold day to pay your taxes. Let me get your elderly tax free. Do what? Wait for a cold day. Yeah, right. Get that to the shelter. 70 cents. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad joke. Let's be on the shelter now. Well, I think we covered a lot of ground. Um, <coughs> Peter, I think you understand where we are, more yes. or less? More or less, yes. Where well, are we next well, Wednesday? Wednesday? Uh, the Wednesday. next meeting is, I believe, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it is a hot meeting. Yeah. Wednesday, March 4th. 4th, right? Right. That's it. Get the information. Yeah. Right. What was the well, increase in yours? I didn't see you project for your city side. Uh, a 1.8% increase. City? On the city side. And when we have 2.13 on the board of the city side. Really? Well, we'll uh, adjourn until the next one. Did you adjourn or recess? Or recess. Recess. Right. Oh, I always like recess at Wednesday. Right. Recess till next Wednesday. Best time of school. Absolutely. That way I didn't have to. I just got straight A's in recess. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> Thank God I had an aunt that was a nun. <laughs> she saved my ass.